another draft science video just to follow up. And so we'll go over some of Chu B. Sirius's comments here. Um, just whatever. Let's just do this crap. Uh, I watched both these videos and your response to Pyro at the same time. I was completely confused by your pretty much spot on. Uh, in my opinion, objection to Pyro seemingly muddling up the idea of consciousness in his insistence that some kind of plants, holy heliotropic plants, are in the same sense conscious simply because they move in rhythm with the sun. But, but, in capital letters, you approve of in Mendham's insistence that it's somehow valid to force the mathematical and scientific complexity of quantum physics into mathematical which doesn't make sense. It's mathematical in both senses here. Both sides of her equation, she has the word, oh, mechanical, sorry. Uh, time and natural language. Oh, look, this whole idea that we're now we're calling, we're calling straight talk natural language. So when you use explicit language, explicit words, in an explicit and accurate sense, all of a sudden now we have to have a, we have to qualify that as some kind of natural language and it's somehow crude and primitive, even though it's explicit and well-defined. That this doesn't make any sense. The fact that I'm not using stupid words that some asshole invented 10 years ago, or word meanings that some asshole invented 15 seconds ago, um, doesn't mean I've, I've broken the language barrier and I'm now um, you know, creating son sonic booms of bullshit. No, it's the other way around. It's the people who aren't speaking straight language and are using fucked up, idiotic, pretensive goddamn um, lofty language, all right, that doesn't have consistent definitions, where words can mean a different thing to every fucking brain that hears them. That's bullshit, all right? That's the kind of language that should have a special word for it, and that word should be fuck you or bullshit. I'm sorry, let's get to the point. Um, the force, the mathematical and scientific complexity of quantum physics. Okay, right there. She's saying something. She's saying she's saying that um, the fundamental structure of the universe is mathematically and scientifically complex. And there's no evidence that it is. The only thing complex about it is the fact that it's really, really tiny and we haven't been able to look at it. All right, but everything we find out about it is really fucking simple. E equals MC squared is fucking dirt simple. Okay, it's basically just saying mass equals energy. That's what it says, clearly. Can't get simpler than that. Mass equals energy. All right, so that's dirt simple. Um, the only thing complicated about quantum, see, quantum physics is, is just a little bit trickier term. All right, because that term by itself is okay, as long as you're careful about what this means. All this means is small particle physics, all right? Now, when you get into things like quantum mechanics and, um, you know, quantum theory, those are different things. So, anyway, let's read the second half here. Um, <clears throat> forcing quantum physics into mechanical time is... A basic category error, isn't it? Now that's her. She's asking this question satirically, I think. Um, you know, or whatever you call that. People, when they really don't want an answer to the question. Um, but no, it's not. Okay, there's no evidence that there's any problem with forcing small particle physics into mechanical time and space. Okay, because they're part of mechanical time and space. Now, there's no evidence, like, again, we're, we, we understand a lot of what's going on in, in the physics that we can um, reasonably detect without fucking it up, the, the particles we can play with without destroying their, their identity. And uh, they're obeying the laws of time and space. They're, they're not breaking any of these laws or rules. And as we dig deeper, uh, you know, we can't really dissect it anything directly. We have to look at the indirect products that we produce. Um, I think the answers are going to come up E equals MC squared. We're going to come up with simple answers to what is creating these circumstances. And the only thing that's complex about quantum mechanics is the fact that it's math that has to be, it's error math. So it's math that has to take very complex 
probability uh, exponents, and it has to move them through the math without them deteriorating uh, the the values of everything. Okay, so it's complicated because of like it's it's, it's like things get complicated when you talk about volume or something and somebody says grams and somebody else is saying milligrams and somebody else is saying feet and somebody you know when you have a whole bunch of conversion things then the math gets complicated because you're converting everything into different things all over the place and so that's where this physics can get complicated is because in the terminology you can start losing um, what you're talking about you can lose the simplicity of the mass equals energy equation and you can start getting lost in this probability crap. It becomes probability math, and that can get kind of gnarly, uh, especially when you're talking about, um, you know, probabilities you can't know with a certainty. But anyway, let's not even get into that shit. But that's just that's so the math is only complicated because it's it's math based on variables we haven't been able to isolate yet. So anyway, the answer I would probably give is that there is more than uh, enough poetry in the mathematics of physics. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm not adding any poetry, so this is just a pile of shit. Where, where's, where's the poetry in what I'm saying? I'm giving you um, uh, clear metaphors for function and, and trying to... Uh, that there are no less valid than the curved or bent space analogies that fucking Einstein used... Uh, you, you have to come up with something we can model in our brain because we can't actually understand a lot of things in three dimensions. We can only understand them in linear dimensions that, because we function in a linear way. You know, on, on a flat earth with gravity. We're not floating in space. Ugh, but anyway. Um, no one needs the red herring of a forced analogy of quantum physics and mechanical time. A forced analogy. So, so, so here she's saying it's just it's it, it is so much an established fact in her opinion that quantum physics isn't limited by real time, like real distance. That it doesn't have it just isn't playing by the same rules somehow. Somehow she's so confident of that fact. There's so much evidence that proven that fact that she'll call it a forced analogy for somebody to talk about quantum physics in any kind of Newtonian way. So if I say, if I have a flashlight and I shoot it in a mirror and the light reflects at a, at a, at a standard expected Newtonian angle, somehow I'm doing something that's a forced analogy, it's a red herring, it's a fraud and a lie. If I say those are particles hitting a substance, there's no friction, they bounce off. That, that, that's, that's a forced analogy. Fuck this shit. Um, mechanical time does not work at the quantum level, at the quantum levels. Oh, there's levels of quantum? Um, because the state change of the electric, electron can't be monitored within mechanical time. Well, who says? Again, you, you're the one saying it doesn't have. Uh, 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 and right here you say the word, can't be monitored. The fact that we can't monitor something, the fact that we can't see it, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that it isn't obeying rules. So, so this is just such a pile of shit. That's the whole fucking point. The point is we can't look at photons because our eyes use photons to see. Obviously we can't throw Volkswagens at Volkswagens to see Volkswagens. All right? So the fact is that, yes, we can't see a photon without fucking with it. That doesn't mean a photon isn't living, existing, in, in a physical universe that obeys laws of time and space, that are the same laws we are obeying. So this is just a pile of shit. If you have some proof of any of this crap, then fine. But otherwise, this pretentious um, you know, argument from, from whatever, pop culture and, and um, scientific jargon and, and snake oil, the religion of the new science, that's all this is, the religion of the new science, this vogue science, this, this science of multi-dimensions and strings and all this other crap. It's just the new God, and that's all the fuck it is, and there's no need for it. There's no evidence of it, once again. It's all a big, fat lie. Um, until we have that evidence, people have no business talking as if the quantum levels aren't obeying 
a mechanical time. That's a canard. So fuck you for that. All right, so I'll just get to a little extra on my point. All right, so I'm basically arguing, all right, that all matter is made of a quantum moving at the speed of light. All right, that the nucleus of an atom, that, well, let's not go there yet. Um, but at least we know that the electrons, well, like I'm, I'm contending, I'm theorizing, that the electrons, that all, all the bits of quantum are basically moving at light speed. And it's just a matter of capturing them. So when Einstein has his, his E equals mc squared, where c is the speed of light squared, a huge number, so we're talking about a hell of a lot of energy, a hell of a lot of photons in one electron, in one atom of hydrogen. I don't know what the exact, you know, how many calories it comes out to, but you can release, okay, a ton of fucking photons from one hydrogen atom. All right, so that electron is full of electrons, I mean photons. Everything's full of those quanta, those things moving at the speed of light. And what all you do in a nuclear reaction, say, is you are just basically releasing them from whatever gravity, whatever force is holding them into those or tight orbits. Um, and so that's basically the whole universe. The whole universe is just matter is an illusion. Matter is just energy trapped in spirals. Um, so I'm going to go a step further here. I, I have already pointed out that I think it's a clock speed, okay, that photons move at a clock speed so they do not actually have any momentum so if I could, if I'm moving my hand in a direction alright and there's a photon released or a photon bounces off it while my hand is moving that photon will incur no new speed because the photon didn't itself move okay while there was movement taking place it only moved like, theoretically what I'm arguing is the universe is moving at a frame rate everything's happening a step at a time all right and it's a very high very fast frame rate so you're not going to see it but it's happening a step at a time and it's only on those steps that photons actually move so they will never be able to incur any energy boost or any energy subtraction because they never precisely ever interact with anything they never get pushed or pulled or there's no such thing as momentum in their universe in their world there's only one checker move at a time that's all they're doing they're moving one checker move at a time so they're never incurring they can't incur any momentum because it's all one step one step one step one step um, all right and so what I have now thought of is the fact that maybe all right and I'm going to give you another metaphor or analogy for it maybe the universe is is made of a a substance and when a photon happens what's happening is a piece of the substance is released and it creates a void where it was and where it is now is now an energized piece because now there's a double piece where it lands so let's just say theoretically just popped out something a little piece popped out of this flew into the air and landed so there would be a void where it was and there would be a double piece where it lands so it's the double pieces that are, that, that are now light or are now a photon and now they are repulsed because they're double and they don't want to be double so now they are going to try to find a place to go that's not double. At the same time, they have left a void. Now the void is saying, saying, <laughs> the void is not wanting to be a void. It's, it's a negative space. It's almost maybe the voids are what contracts and becomes gravity. So that gravity is essentially the voids left behind by the energy. So the fact that there's a material universe, the inverse of that material universe, of what we call the material universe, this thing matter, this thing called energy, the inverse of it is gravity. Gravity is basically the coalescing of all those little holes. All the holes start attracting each other and they start running into each other. They get run into each other and they create the gravity the voids create the gravity 
and the double, um, you know, creates the material. And they might travel together. I mean, maybe a photon is this doubling of space, okay? So now it's a double layer, and right behind it is the void. But I haven't gone through this mechanically in my mind, so this is brand new to me, too. So but I'm just trying to think of how, how that, like at the center of the Earth, could be void. It could be the void left behind when, when matter was, was released, when energy was released. A photon was released into the universe. Um, and, and so I just have to figure out how the voids coalesced you know, without the matter just refilling the voids. I mean, why don't the photons just fly back into the voids? Um, but I, you know, I'll get to that. But I think that makes sense in terms of that would create a balance where, um, you know, that would explain a lot of the, 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 the circumstance of this, this powerful void force that just keeps asking for energy, keeps trying to grab matter back, um, and, and creates this, this gravity. Um, magnetism is another complication, so I have to work through that one. Um, but anyway, draft science, that's what it's called, draft science. I think um, this is reasonable speculation and uh, for people to uh, act as if I'm breaking some sort of rules because I dare to speculate on how the mechanical universe might be functioning is just really disgusting. Anyway, but I think the, I think the clock thing works. I don't think there's going to be any way that can be proven not possible. I mean, it explains a lot. Um, and uh, so the real game is, again, just figuring out the relationship between this speed of light, the, the, the photon, the photon's moving. Why is it moving in a certain direction? That's the question. It, it's, it has a choice at the clock speed. It can move left, right, forward, back, up, down. Why does it go in a particular direction? And so, because it has no momentum. So at every clock tick, there's some cause for it to go this way, that 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 way. And so that's the one I'm going to work on, is how does it, how does it sitting here, like this, at the clock speed, it has no identity, essentially. And even though it's spent a billion years traveling in one direction, and it will likely keep going in one direction, but why? Is it being pulled, or is it being pushed? And how is that pull or push represented in the universe around it? How does it know what checker piece, what square to move to? So anyway, I'll work on that one. <laughs> so anyway, till next time and such. So yeah, that's enough. Should have had the light on. But too late now. It would have been much better.